Do you see then that? Let me give an example. This Paramhansa who's meant to be an avatar. Okay, he's an avatar. Just that we might question what the definition of an avatar is. Avatar is not God. That's where we might really be at odds with some other people's view. Now Jesus in the story says, um, the disciple's not greater than his master, but will become as his master. Not certain where he says that, but that's my view of the story. Okay, for a minute. So Kriyananda, who comes to um, Paramahansa in the last four years of Paramahansa's life, becomes a very interesting key person in the future, setting up uh, nine or so um, major communities internationally of um, uh, yeah communities. Very successful, I mean, last 40 or 50 years or so. Which is quite something for communities. They tend to die out within a few years. Does he become greater than his master? Because after all, if you look at Paramahansa's life, he has all sorts of struggles. And in some sense didn't simply come as perfect and finish as perfect. Um, he learnt a bit like in the story of Jesus. You know, he grew in spiritual stature um, during his lifetime, which ideally we all do, yes? It's just that we credit some as being absolutely outstanding and we label them as avatars. Perhaps correctly, perhaps wrongly, perhaps misunderstanding what avatar should mean, or does mean. So I'm not saying that Kriyananda has achieved necessarily something that's greater than his master. He's become as his master, and his master was someone who equally came here for a reason that benefited himself. It was a blessing in his development. And I think it's important to have this view, else we see the avatar as God and uh, if he's not God and it could well be that he isn't God <laughs> after all it's uncertainty and everything it seems in, in this world uh, we could have got it wrong there's an awful lot of gurus that really shouldn't have been taken as people's gurus you would think and, um, and teachers and so on and so forth So it protects us, this view from, or is this view that keeps us from worshipping the Guru. Probably very important. I take that to be the um, teaching of the Jesus story anyway. Right, uh, here we have it. Luke um, 6.40 the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect, namely complete, shall be as his master. Uh, okay, so um, if he's complete in terms of the master, then he'll be as his master. But of course, if his master is not God, <laughs> well, he won't be God, will he? <laughs> <laughs> like his master, he'll be something less than, which is not what we mm, mistakenly or otherwise tend to call the notion of a guru or a, especially an avatar. And perhaps the whole concept of guru, avatar, teachers is very suspect when it comes to spiritual things. For we're only meant to be learning from the Holy Spirit. What I want to say is we can be very involved in ministry and it's not actually 
a reliable mark of our attainment or achievement in spiritual things, but rather an experience that we need to have. Else there's no point in us being the one doing it. God can do it simpler and better without us. What I'm saying is you don't have to be a minister. In fact, the very notion of being a minister, a missionary, a disciple, is that you're in some sense leading and teaching and doing the rescue. But you're not. It's God who does it all. And if he chooses to do it through us, it's because that'd be such a blessing to us. <laughs> in which case we're in need. We're certainly not some perfect teacher that can be reliably relied upon to show the way. It doesn't mean to say we don't find certain teachings very helpful, but only on reflection between yourself and the Holy Spirit within you. In other words, does it add up to your experience so far that you've been taught? And that has to be the deciding factor to how you will act and live and trust accordingly in the future. And from such, you will automatically find God puts you in situations that are appropriate for your next progress. Because he loves you, cares for you, you're precious to him. He's a lovely God. Dearest friend, thank you, Heavenly Dad. <laughs>